Semantics. Spoiler alert! More information about the enigmatic Khmer was revealed in the Acolyte Episode 6, which may have sparked a theory regarding the Sith's means of survival. Since the conclusion of Episode 5, one of the most talked about aspects of the Acolyte has been the Sith's pre-Star Wars emergence. In order to avoid going against canon, the Acolyte must preserve the Sith's belief that they were extinct up until the events of the first chronological Star Wars film, which the Jedi held. In any case, following the Jedi slaughter in the Acolyte Episode 5, Khmer unintentionally labeled himself a Sith. Many began to wonder how they would manage to survive, continue to exist, and, above all, maintain their anonymity for another 100 years until Palpatine Palpatine's plan was implemented. It's interesting to note that the theories that explain how the Sith have stayed hidden and will continue to do so for another century while undermining the Jedi light may have their roots in the suggestions given by Khmer by the end of the Acolyte Episode 6. Wondering if it's honorable to kill me like this. Welcome to Movie Spy. Previously, Khmer belonged to the Jedi Order. Khmer previously battled for the light. The Acolyte Episode 6 features Osha appearing frightened next to Khmer, who looks like he's in pain. The most interesting plot point in Episode 6 of the Acolyte is between Osha and Khmer. The pair appeared on an unidentified, distant planet, with Khmer trying to convince Osha that the Jedi might be just as likely as the Sith to misuse the Force. This gave rise to intriguing analyses of Star Wars conventions and further insights on Khmer's character. Ironically, Khmer's encounters with Osha in the Acolyte Episode 6 revealed a few pieces of information about him, despite the fact that much of this character remains hidden behind mystery and darkness. In the Acolyte Episode 6, it is revealed that Khmer was formerly a member of the Jedi Order. Khmer answers Osha's question about why he speaks in a Jedi manner by saying that he was a member of the Order a long time ago. Khmer then makes a suggestion that he might be much older than he appears to be, as Osha responds that she has never heard of him. Khmer's history as a Jedi is fascinating, regardless of his age. Like many Sith Lords, the figure was once a part of the light before falling and being drawn toward evil. Khmer claims that his Jedi Master stabbed his back. Khmer's injuries might be more significant than initially believed. The scar on Khmer in Episode 6 of the Acolyte. In Episode 6 of the Acolyte, a significant visual Easter egg is the enormous scar that runs up Khmer's back. Two different sequences feature the scar. In the second, Osha inquires as to its origin. Osha says it appears like someone stabbed him in the back when Khmer asks how she believes he got it. Osha Osha asks whether Khmer's previous Jedi Master caused the wound, to which Khmer replies that someone flung him away. It's interesting that Khmer says neither yes nor no to this. This is when the Khmer idea starts to take shape. It's possible that Khmer's Sith Master stabbed him because he doesn't explicitly say that a Jedi Master did it. It is clear that Khmer has received training on the dark side of the Force, and compared to the Jedi, the Sith are noticeably much more brutal in their methods of instruction. A Sith Master giving Khmer his scar, or perhaps a secret Sith concealed among the ranks of the Jedi Order. Order would have made far more sense. The Jedi Order itself may be hiding Sith. It would be very logical for the Sith to hide among the Jedi. Jedi and Sith from Star Wars are standing next to each other. According to the relevant idea, the Sith pretended to be Jedi in order to conceal their existence. Even Soul's experiences with Khmer and the Acolyte and the prequel trilogy demonstrate how difficult it can be for Jedi to detect Sith presences directly. The Sith emphasizes the dark side, which frequently impairs the judgment of people who lean toward the light. Because of this, the Sith may have lived for thousands of years by disguising themselves as Jedi and hiding in plain sight. The Sith followed the rule of two at the time of the Acolyte. There can only be two Sith at any given time, a master and an apprentice, according to the Sith rule of two. This has always been the case, but as long as the apprentice and Acolyte never tried to usurp the master, apprentices were permitted to teach their own Acolytes the dark side of the Force. The safest place to hide would have been among the Jedi, since there would only have been three Sith at most in the entire galaxy. The number of Jedi during the High Republic era of Star Wars was in the tens of thousands. The Sith would find it quite simple to blend in with this group, secretly engaging in their evil activities while feigning to uphold the light for those in their vicinity. This would clarify Khmer's claim that he was a Jedi in the past. A Sith might have enlisted him in the Order and then betrayed him by recruiting another apprentice. If so, Khmer's silence in response to Osha's query would make sense because, in reality, he was stabbed in the back by his Jedi and Sith Master. The Sith would always have an advantage because of this. The Sith would gain a tactical advantage by hiding among the Jedi, an image of Darth Bane that Yider Chacon edited over the stranger in the Acolyte. Darksiders lurking among the Jedi would not only give the Sith an easier place to hide, but it would also give them a tactical advantage. For millennia, the Sith remained hidden from the Jedi in order to wait for the perfect opportunity to defeat their long-ago foes. This would, of course, need the Sith generations to be aware of the strategies, movements, objectives, and general state of their foes. It would be considerably simpler to obtain this information if the Sith were to infiltrate the Jedi. Living in the 
the Coruscant Temple, surrounded by the Jedi Council, and surrounded by other Jedi would provide the Sith with unrestricted access to observe the Jedi. Palpatine's successful integration of the Senate with the Jedi Order is precisely how he ultimately overthrew the Jedi. With this information, it is not implausible to believe that the Sith infiltrated the Jedi as a means of maintaining both tactical maneuver and secrecy. All of this might be demonstrated by Kamir's presence in the Acolyte, and additional revelations regarding his Jedi background might bolster the hypothesis. Thanks for watching.